My check engine light has been on for a while. I'm a little embarrassed to say how long. <laughs> so I'm finally getting it checked out. Today I'm taking the van in to get about $3,500 worth of repairs done, which I'm not excited about, but it needs to happen. So I'm packing up everything. They think that they're gonna need it for a day and a half. Luckily I get to stay with a friend while I get this sorted, but hopefully Ariel will be back to me soon and we can continue our adventures. I'm actually gonna go this way. People are always surprised when they find out that I have my road bike inside of my van. Not only is it a green form of transportation, the way to keep my cardio up when I'm not in the mountains, but it's also just cheaper, man. I will bike my butt all over the city before I book an Uber. <laughs> I have to put my entire house back together. Good God, it looks like somebody just threw this car around when they were driving, like test driving it or whatever. Like everything is a mess. Like, wow, they test drove it. just realized that I'm only 17 miles from Clear Lake. And so even though the responsible thing was to go find cell signal and get some work done, I am gonna go to the lake and do one dive in Oregon because I actually haven't done any diving in this state. So that is gonna happen today. Welcome to my last episode of my dive dry road trip. When I first set out, I was planning on visiting a bunch of different states and diving all over the place, but the road had a different idea of what this was gonna look like. So I ended up spending the entire summer in the Pacific Northwest, a little stopover in Canada, and now I'm heading back to California. Today, I'm going to test my limits with the coldest dive that I have done yet. I'm expecting the water to be around 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna wear a little bit more undergarments and I'll have to add a little bit more weight to compensate for that. But uh, I'm I'm ready to freeze my butt off. Mamanos. I parked by the Clear Lake Resort and there's a nice little parking lot, day use area and a trail that leads straight to the water. So there it is. Visibility is supposed to be excellent. Apparently on good days, it can be like about a hundred feet or something, but I just ran into someone who was diving in a wetsuit and he said he froze to death. His computer clocked 42 degrees. What? This is why I need to look where I'm going. What? Oh no. Whoa, we're on a bit of a slope today. I didn't realize at the time that my last dive in Seattle and the Puget Sound was gonna be my last dive there. So I'm actually really glad that this worked out that my sort of <laughs> random spontaneous plans brought me to one final dive in the Pacific Northwest. And what? Yeah, I really love stopping and chatting with people when I'm out scuba diving, but it's funny because it seems like they always wait for the moment when I'm like carrying the heaviest gear. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is how I stay somewhat cool while I'm getting dressed. Tiny little fan. To compensate for the lower temperature, I'm gonna wear my normal yoga pants with the wool leggings on top. I have my sweat wicking layer and then a little sweater over that. I'm going to pair it with an actual jacket and I think I'm gonna double up on socks. Let's get changed. I haven't recorded myself getting into my dry suit in a while so let's see how I do compared to my first struggles. Son of a it's been recording this whole time. <laughs> I'm wearing a lot more layers this time so that could be a factor. But let's do it. Oof. 
feel fat in this. Everybody's favorite part. A little bit of wind. too bad. What was that? Nine minutes. A little tip for diving in cold water. If your mask fogs up, open the top of your mask just a tiny bit to let in a minimal amount of water, enough that you can slosh it around and get rid of the fog and then clear it just like any normal mask skill. But it's best to use just that tiny bit of water because if you fully flood or even just half flood your mask, it's going to shock your face and feel really uncomfortable. It could even cause a sort of involuntary inhale of a little bit of water. So it's just best to keep the water to a minimum inside of your mask. I did all of 40 minutes. 
and I am frozen. <laughs> oh, it's actually kind of a cool lake to dive, like of the lakes that I've done so far. That was my favorite, but like my gloves are really thin. My hands, like <laughs> that's what really got me, my hands. Oh my gosh. It's pretty cool though, because they uh, stock this lake. There are quite a lot of fish. So it's kind of a fun difference from, uh, where did I go before? Lake Crescent? I mean, it's stocked, so it's not like it's natural, but still, Jesus. <laughs> seriously, that was so cold. <laughs> Don't do that. Cute look for me. <laughs> Almost off. I'm gonna get out of this. Jeez. <sighs> if Gabe is watching this, he was the diver that I ran into who just did this dive in a wetsuit. Like, <sighs> Props to you, man. I would not have made it. That's wild. <laughs> okay. Come out. Okay. There she is. Thank you, Pacific Northwest. It has been an amazing trip. I cannot wait to come back. My road tripping is only just beginning, so stay tuned. There will definitely be more adventures like these in the United States in the future, but for now, my next big road trip is to Baja, Mexico. I'll see you on the road. Now for real, I gotta go find cell reception because <laughs> I'm cutting it a little close. Let's go. Is that your little fort? Let me see. <laughs> Is it too cold out here? All of a sudden it became fall, huh? <laughs> Let's go for a hike. As I was heading down Oregon on my way back to California, I decided to stop over in Shasta. And the reason for that is because this was the last place that I stayed before heading into Oregon and like starting this whole adventure. I had left my full-time job in May. And so there was a lot of like <laughs> admin and questions. Like I spent so many hours on the computer just trying to figure out what the heck I was doing with this next phase. I stayed a couple of nights here in Shasta with a beautiful view of the mountain and I just kept going, you know, like there was just something about this project that I really believed in. I know that this is the kind of content and teaching that I want to be doing, you know, I like sharing adventures, inspiring people to go diving in places that maybe they haven't thought of yet and teaching people how to do it in a safe way. I'm definitely not on a trail right now and I feel really bad about it, so I need to turn around. <laughs> Abby, where's the trail, honey? I don't think so. So I guess this is just me saying, whatever crazy idea you have, just freaking like try it, you know? I, I thought with my first few videos that you all would watch this and be like, this is the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> I just wasn't sure because all of my videos had been so focused on teaching skills. And although I'll still do that because I think they're helpful, I wanna like mix in this sort of content where I'm sharing like all these crazy van life adventures with you. Cause it's just fun. It makes me feel like more of a whole person on the internet. So anyway, think of your craziest dream, go for it. What are you gonna lose? You know, it may just turn into something really cool. And now I'm just gonna love on this mountain view. Okay, love you, bye.